Welcome to this video from the Consultants Development Institute. I'm Priscilla Watson, a presenter with CDI. This course is Strategic Planning in Organizations. The course is for anyone who will be involved in strategic planning, and it applies to any type of organization. Part 1 gives a clear description of strategic planning, including the importance of always customizing it to be relevant, realistic, and flexible. Part 2 gives step-by-step -step instructions to customize your own sensible strategic planning process. Part 3 also gives specific instructions, this time to decide your strategic priorities. Part 4 guides you to develop and implement your plan document. All of Parts 2, 3, and 4 include useful templates and tools that you can use and share with others in your organization. They are available from your account in CDI's Learning Management System. Let's look at the topics that we'll cover now in Part 1. First, we'll list the many benefits from doing strategic planning so you can motivate your planners and yourself to do your planning process. Then, we'll share an overview of sensible strategic planning, planning that is always relevant, realistic, and flexible. And like the topics in Parts 2, 3, and 4, we'll give you a handy tool now that you can use to describe strategic planning to others. Strategic planning focuses on what's strategic, so we'll define what strategic is to help your understanding of strategic planning. The most important part of strategic planning is not the plan document. It's the strategic thinking during the process, and we'll explain what that is. Before we delve deeper into strategic planning, We'll explain how planning in for-profits, non-profits, and government are very similar. So know that, regardless of your type of organization, all of this course is useful to you. There are many different ways to do strategic planning, but most of them are based on a standard framework. We'll explain that framework so you can prepare for customizing it. There are many benefits to doing strategic planning. That's why successful organizations keep doing it. Perhaps the biggest benefit is that it focuses everyone on the same goals. That saves time and money. When resources are tightly integrated and aligned, they're more effective and efficient. That means lower costs and increased productivity. When everyone is focused on the same goals, they're working together. That's the foundation for a strong team in the workplace. That's also the glue that keeps different teams and departments integrated and aligned with each other. When ongoing problems occur with personnel, it's rarely because people just can't get along. It's because they have vague or conflicting roles. Strategic planning can clarify who should be doing what and when. Stakeholders are groups of people who will be affected by the organization or who have a stake in it. They want to know that the organization is being run well. A strategic plan shows that leaders are being proactive and planful. This course includes a very useful handout called An Overview of Sensible Strategic Planning. The handout explains strategic planning in a way that is understandable to everyone. There are many types of planning. Strategic planning is unique in that it is focused on the entire organization, not just on a particular project or on finances or staffing. Everything in an organization should be focused on working toward the purpose or mission of the organization. Strategic planning clarifies that mission. The planning also clarifies the most important current priorities or goals for working toward that mission. Those become goals for the board, CEO, and others in the organization. The best strategic plans don't stop at listing the goals. They also specify how each goal will be achieved. That means associating action plans with each goal, including who will be doing what and by when to achieve each goal. Strategic plans should be strategic. 
That means focused on matters that can affect the entire organization for years to come. They also should be produced from strategic thinking. That means more than just listing exciting ideas. All of this might sound a bit overwhelming, but it need not be. In part two, we'll show you how to customize your planning to suit the nature and needs of your organization. Let's look closer now at what we mean by strategic. A topic is strategic if it could affect your entire organization. For example, it might mean a change to the structure of your organization or how it operates. Strategic matters also can affect your entire organization for several years, not just for the next several weeks or months. Also, it could involve significant resources for you to address. That might be in terms of time, money, or people. Strategic activities address what's important, not just urgent. For example, continued shortages of cash aren't solved by just getting more money. They're solved by changing how the organization operates. Strategic also applies to any of the activities intended to address strategic priorities, such as restructuring the organization or implementing a process across the entire organization. Some experts even assert that strategic plans don't always have to address changes from outside of the organization. They might be about solving many problems inside, too. The most important part of strategic planning is not the plan document itself. It's the strategic thinking and discussions during the process. So people who quickly do the planning just to get the document done are missing the point. That's like buying a map and then thinking that you've already taken the journey. Actually, strategic thinking should be an ongoing process in any type of organization. Then, when it's time to do strategic planning, you might write down your strategic thoughts to produce your strategic plan. Let's look more closely at what strategic thinking is. First, you and your planner should carefully think about what's going on outside of your organization. That could be about trends, perhaps political, social, economic, or even technical. It could be about various laws and regulations that might affect you. You might know many of the influences already. It also includes taking a good look inside the organization. What about your board, staffing, finances, and marketing? What is being done well, and what could be done even better? Then ask yourself some hard questions, like what might happen to us? What are our operations, and what are best? How do we position ourselves to thrive well into the future? Then think about how can those options best occur? What do we need to do? This need not be overwhelming, but don't cut corners. The ways that strategic thinking are done depend on the culture of your organization. Some planners prefer orderly and rational methods, while others prefer more creative and exploratory methods. CDI's handout, An Overview of Sensible Strategic Planning, explains what strategic and strategic thinking are. Share that handout with your planners. Many people believe that strategic planning is very different between for-profits and non-profits, but that's not true. Sure, the focus of the planning is different. For-profits focus on maximizing profits and non-profits focus on making a positive impact for clients. But major differences in how organizations carry out their planning is more a matter of the culture of the organizations the situation that they're in, and the purposes of their planning. For example, subcultures prefer a very orderly sequence of activities in their planning, while others prefer rather organic and unfolding activities. Organizations in similar life stages, such as startups, often face the same challenges regardless of their legal status. Thus, the strategic goals in their planning might be very similar. Also, for-profits and non-profits would have very similar approaches to planning if they have the same purposes in planning, such as to expand services or reorganize operations. So actually, for-profits and non-profits have a lot in common when it comes to strategic planning. 
you have a handout that you can use to explain this to others. It's called Comparison of For-Profit and Non-Profit Strategic Planning. It's useful now to give some thought to what you've learned. So in your learning journal from CDI, write down the most important learning so far. For example, answer this question. How would you define strategic planning and strategic thinking to your planners? Pause the video and write down your answer. There are different approaches or models of planning to choose from. However, they are all some variation of the same overall framework. For example, some include all of the parts of the framework or skip certain parts. Some emphasize certain parts more than others. Now let's look at the framework. We'll just name the parts quickly to give you an impression for now. Again, remember, we'll help you customize your own realistic approach in part two of this series. Often the first activity in planning is clarifying the mission or purpose of the organization. Some planners also find it useful to articulate the desired future or vision for the organization and its customers. That helps later on when selecting goals to put in the plan. They also might list the desired values that they want the organization to work by. That can help to guide how those goals are achieved. Next, planners take a wide but realistic look outside to consider various influences that might be affecting the organization. When doing this, they also might list various opportunities and threats facing the organization. Then they take a good look inside at what is working well and what could be improved. They might list various strengths and weaknesses to address, for example, in the board, products, marketing, staffing, and finances. For-profits, especially, like to form a grand strategy to position themselves in the industry. They carefully examine the strategy in their board meetings. Then planners are ready to stand back and think further about what they've found. What issues did they identify? What goals might address them? This is when strategic thinking is really useful. For example, planners might think about what strengths might we use to strengthen what weaknesses, to ward off what threats, to take advantage of what opportunities? This might sound harder than it is, but there are ways to make things simpler. One is to use what's called a SWOT model. We'll show you how to do that in part three of this series. So planners might list the top five to seven most important issues to address, perhaps in the form of five to seven questions or they might list five to seven goals instead. Either way, the questions or goals aren't useful unless each has an action plan about how to answer the question or achieve the goal. Action plans specify who will be doing what activities and by when. It's best to involve the people who will be doing those activities so the action plans are realistic. Now planners are ready to document their strategic plan. The plan should be approved by the board or upper management to help ensure that it gets implemented. Some planners might think that the plan means the end of the strategic planning. However, your plan becomes real when it's being implemented. You might find that it needs to be changed then too. That's okay. The last part is for planners to think about the planning. What worked? What would they do differently next time? The last phase is to celebrate your success. So that is the overall strategic planning framework that other approaches or models can be adapted from. Here are some prominent models that you might consider for your planning. Part 2 includes step-by-step -step guidelines to do that. The conventional model of planning does all of those steps in the framework. That can work for organizations that have sufficient resources to pursue an ambitious vision and who have few current major issues to address now. In contrast, the issues-based model is for organizations that have very limited resources and several major current issues to address now. They might use this model to address the issues and then use the conventional model later on. 
The organic model is best when working toward a very long-range vision that involves many people. For example, a community's 25-year vision to transform the health of our community. This model includes gathering people to articulate the long-range vision and then getting each person to commit to at least one realistic action before the next meeting, for example, in two to three months. The real-time planning model is best for organizations where things are rapidly changing around them. For them, conventional plans could very quickly become obsolete. For example, during one month, planners might take a wide look around the organization and report their results. The next month, they might take a good look inside their organization and report their results. Then they look at what they found and decide what to do about it. So every month or so, they're doing a step in strategic planning. Which of these models seem most attractive to you now? We've come to the end of part one in this series, an overview of sensible strategic planning. We invite you to do part two, which includes step-by-step -step guidelines and tools to customize your approach to planning. If you ever have any questions or want to share feedback with us, then simply send an email to info at consultantsdevelopmentinstitute.org. Again, thank you for your time during this video.